I'd like to uh, give floor to uh, Yelena and her talk uh, is Art and Science Practices Beyond Human. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, and thank you so much for this invitation. And of course, many thanks to High School of Economics for organizing this relevant event. And in this presentation, I'm going to review new artistic practices related to technology in the context of contemporary groundbreaking scientific research. During the last decades, scientific research about human body questions our understanding of body itself and suggests a new concept of what is human and what is unhuman. At the same time, innovative technologies provide different ways of modifications and extensions of human body, which also change our perspective. Together with post-human philosophical discourse, these technologies create many opportunities for artistic practices between art and science. As Eugene Thacker says, Post-human discourses offer valuable insights into the ways in which notions of the human diversify, self-transform, and mutate as rapidly as do new technologies. And one of the most important theories in this context is Donna Haraway and how Simeon's cyborgs and women, she presents three crucial boundary breakdowns. The first one is the boundary between human and animal. The cyborg appears in myth precisely where the boundary between human and animal is transgressed. The second boundary, which is bleaching, is the distinction between animal-human, such as organism, and machine. And the third distinction is a subset of the second, the boundary between physical and non-physical. And having these three, uh, uh, and having this three crucial boundary breakdowns in mind. In this presentation, we will explore several approaches to human body as a media and art and science practices, from the first pioneering examples to contemporary overview. Uh, first of all, I'd like to present such pioneers of body modification and cyborgization uh, like Arlan and Stellark. One moment. Uh, yeah, and um, <clears throat> um, yes. Uh, of course, body modification isn't something brand new. We can see many examples in uh, human history, uh, like this, for instance, and that. But modern technologies provide completely new possibilities here. Uh, these artists were one of the first who started to use their body as a media to transform and modify it. Uh, I'm actually not going to focus my presentation on these artists, but I have to mention them as pioneers. And uh, actually that was my introduction. And the first part of my presentation is devoted to projects which present new relationships between human and machine. And I would like to quote again Eugene Thacker, the post-human can only work as biopolitics, which means interrogating and creating the possibilities for the emergence of new relationships between human and machine, biology and technology, genetic and computer information. And in this uh, part, we'll see a human body in symbiotic or even uh, parasitic relationships with machine. The first project I'd love to present is Time Capsule by Eduardo Katz. Uh, this is a performance and an installation. Uh, the artist implanted into his body this chip stored into the bioglass capsule. And after that, any person could connect to this chip through the internet and read the uploaded files. At the same space uh, where the per performance took place, there were archived photograph uh, photographs of artist's family. And these pictures symbolized his identity. The main point of the project was to destroy the boundaries between digital and analog memory between the privacy of the human body uh, and the public information space, uh, between subjective and objective, um, between biological and technological. And he demonstrated the prototype of the cyborg. 
Uh, the next product is also a project by um, Eduardo Katz, A Positive. In A Positive, the human body provides the robot with life sustaining nutrients by actually donating blood to it. The bio robot accepts the hum human blood and extracts oxygen from it, which enough to support this small flame, an archetypal symb symbol of life. In exchange, the biorobot donates dextrose to the human body, which accepts it intravenously. Here we can see uh, symbiotic relationships between human and machine. Usually human is only consuming, let's say exploiting machine. But here we can see these new interconnections, these new relationships. Uh, the next project is uh, Speculative Capital by, by Manuel Bertrand and René Mayol. Uh, here again, artists are developing completely new relationships between human and machine, new connections between these agents and new dynamics of creation of value in a post-work scenario. Uh, the idea is to use an energy of the heat of human bodies. A single human body can produce 100 watts of heat. Normally that energy is wasted. Uh, using thermoelectric generators, artists convert the temperature differential between the human body and the ambient into usable electricity. The generated electricity is fed to a computer uh, that produce cryptocurrency. Uh, the next product is a project by uh, Vital, uh, Dmitry Morozov until I die. For this installation, the artist created special batteries which generate electricity using artist's blood. These batteries connected to the module generate a sound composition that plays via a small speaker. The blood used in the installation was stored up gradually over 18 months. And this project also includes this post-human perspective, of course, but uh, here the relationships between human and machine are parasitic. The installation inverts these normal relationships between these agents, and here the machine literally consumes human body to operate, or let's say, to live. Uh, the project also relates to Russian cosmism and the key figure in the movement, Alexander Bogdanov, who founded the Soviet Union's Institute of Hematology and Blood Transfusion, where a blood transfusion was understood as a way to prolong the human lifespan. Uh, the next project, which also illustrates two uh, breaking of boundaries, uh, which Donna Haraway presented. Uh, this is a, a project by Vita Shachnovich, ACCTV. ACCTV is a jury which allowed the owner to know if he, she, uh, or she is near a CCTV camera in the city. Uh, basically, ACCTV is a jury organa projection. Uh, and with this device, the person gets a sense of being surveilled. We can see the object as a, the extension of man in Marshall McLuhan term. And at the same moment, the project is the illustration of Harvey's learning of the boundaries between uh, human and machine, and also between uh, physical and non-physical. The next part includes projects using biotechnologies. These technologies and new scientific research also change our understanding of the human body and blur the, this boundary between human and animal, human, for instance, human and bacteria in this case. Uh, actually, if we talk about microbiome, for instance, human cells make up only 33% of the body's total cell count. The rest are non-human cells, our microbiome. And the first project is a project uh, by uh, Paul Van Nuys, uh, Labor. And in this project, artist points out a question, what does labor smell like? Uh, labor is a dynamic self-regulating art installation that recreates the scent of people exerting themselves under stressful conditions. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there are, however, no people involved in making the smell. It's created by bacteria, uh, which, which are in these uh, bioreactors. And um, 
actually here we can talk of new understanding of human and unhuman. What is human if the smell of sweat is produced by our microbiome, bacteria? Uh, the next project is also a uh, question our understanding how human body can look like. And this project is a project by Anastasia Alokina Pro. And this project artist is speculating around the modification of human DNA, which could color and ejaculate. And here we can also remember Thacker when he says biotechnologies allows us to produce the body through informatics. And in this context of bioinformatics and biosemiotics related to human body, Judith Halberstam and Ira Livingstone state, the post-human doesn't necessitate the obsolescence of the human. It doesn't represent an evolution or devolution of the human. Rather, it particip participates in redistribution of difference and identity. The post-human doesn't reduce difference from others to difference from self, but rather emerges in the pattern of resonance and interference between the two. Uh, the next project, uh, which is re really important and relevant to me, is uh, Open Source Estrogen uh, by Mary Magic. The artist was inspired by Tested Junkie by Paul Preciado. And Preciado describes taking a testosterone as a political action. And in Open Source Estrogen, artist presents DIY biopractices as a form of civil disobedience. She's developing DIY and do it with other protocols of estrogen extraction. In response to the various biopolitics of hormonal control on female and trans bodies prescribed by governments and institutions. Uh, this is a speculative project. Uh, the artist assumes that that kind of DIY protocol can be done, and she's exploring and developing different DIY approaches to the estrogen extraction. And the next, my section is entirely devoted to the breaking boundaries between human and animal within their artistic practices. Uh, Helena, sorry, only one minute left. Um, okay, I can show maybe one project. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, then I will present uh, the first project by Ai Hasegawa. I want to deliver a dolphin. And this is also a speculative project. The artist is exploring how human body uh, should be modified to be able to deliver a dolphin. And this project can also be seen as a break in these boundaries between uh, animal and human. And uh, to conclude uh, and summarize in all presented above, we can talk of art and science practices as about hybrid practices combining relevant philosophical discourse with new technologies in order to present innovative ways and understanding of a future human, which is already a hybrid agent, breaking the boundaries between human and non-human. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Elena. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Yes, I had to, uh, yeah, to yes to to stop to stop you uh, because the topic is fascinating. The images are fantastic, and the project themselves. Yes, I think yeah, I just need more time to to talk about. Uh, but we have uh, five minutes for uh, comments and questions, colleagues. I understand that yes, we have this very strict timing, but. We have five minutes, which is a universe. The good news is that, uh, as I said, Yelena will be uh, talking today at the roundtable uh, discussion. Yes, so uh, those of you who will be able to join uh, will have a chance to ask questions. But okay, well, right. So it seems like it seems like we have no comments or questions. Everyone, yes. Oh, yeah, just just a sec. Uh, right, uh, there is one comment from Lainey Burton. Uh, 
she thinks you might find the work of uh, Svenja Kratz quite interesting too. So I don't know if you're familiar with... Uh... No, I, I will check her out. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Lainey. Uh, okay. Uh, there is a question. Uh, what does posthuman mean for you in curatorial sense uh, from Anna uh, Panalova? Uh, well, in, in curatorial uh, sense, we can talk about some experiments when, uh, for, instance, uh, uh, for instance, artificial intelligence can be used uh, to curate the, pro the, the exhibition or maybe it can be some hybrid practices um, when curator can use artificial intelligence to create an, an exhibition. Well, I can mention uh, Alexander Burinkov, who experimented with, in this context. There is a question from YouTube. Um, um, yes, I will try to translate. Uh, they ask, uh, so I don't know who asks, unfortunately, but the question is, what do you think about the nature of such projects? Uh, are they more about, you know, expanding our knowledge or very often uh, as uh, entertainment or both? So what do you think? I, I, of course, not uh, entertainment, <laughs> for sure. I think it's uh, like uh, the most avant-garde practices which are trying to change our mind. If you are not familiar with the post-human practices, these kind of projects can just uh, uh, kind of help you to open your mind to understand what, what does it mean to, the, uh, to be this future human today. Mm -hmm. So it's about exploring the borders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Totally. Thank you. Uh, 